Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a conversation with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife. And I have a list of questions because sometimes when I connect with Freddie, I just could just sit here and just feel all warm and fuzzy because he has a very gentle energy, very sweet energy, very calming energy at times. And then other times he has like this really passionate, fun, joyful energy. So right now I feel him very mellow, okay? I've been connecting with him off and on all day today. And so where I'm at right here right now is mellow energy. All right, that may change over the course of our conversation. Eh, whatever, it is what it is. But that gives you a sense as a viewer how you may be interacting with Freddie Mercury or other favorite celebrities of yours in the afterlife because you are. Chances are you are. And usually it comes through feeling, emotion, a sensing kind of a, 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 an experience of connection most often that's how it starts okay so you're not just making that up it's just the way it is you guys okay so let's bring Freddie closer so you guys can he's off to my side here kind of he's kind of right here you can feel his energy hey <laughs> yeah it's nice yeah I know we've been we've been um really You've been at like arm's length all day today. We've been really chit chatty and talking about a lot. We've been like on the roller coaster of emotions today, haven't we? Mm -hmm. We did a talk for a small group earlier today of, uh, about self love and self care. And so, one of the things that I have been uh, maybe contemplating is that the right word? Maybe, you know, life purpose and a recommitment to to life purpose. And that's oftentimes related to our skills, right? Our gifts. And it makes me think of people who are well known for their gifts and their skills, like Freddie Mercury, a mega superstar, rock star, and in the afterlife, rediscovered by whole new generations of people, of, of fans. So that's pretty awesome. And so I'm curious about your, how you would describe for us what life purposes what purposes not the meaning of life per se but the purpose like individual people why do we have this need to find a purpose and does that really exist is there really a thing like does everybody kind of have a thing he kind of leans forward he's wearing white i'm just going to share that he leans forward and he says well, i think everyone for the most part, I think, I think it can be said that everyone is, is sort of searching for something. Everyone is looking for something. Um, for some, that could be, you know, a love, a love of their life. Or for others, it could be a career or, or maybe others, a family. It could be um, a variety of things. I think, um, I think the commonality or the common interest is in the search. The looking for or the, the, the feeling of a quest, uh, this uh, longing or this draw towards something, you know, this like magnetism towards something. And there's this, this concept or idea in, in, in the human mind that it's outside of ourselves, it's outside of you. And for the most part, that's just a sort of a intoxicating thought, a almost like the carrot, you know, the, the trying the carrot and the stick kind of to get um, to get the the person, the human mind out of its shell out of the the um, you guys I'm trying to connect with his exact words, which is tricky at times to get the human out of their shell to to encourage, to get an enticement to, to experience life, to have some adventure, you know, to, to go on this discovery, this, this experience of discovery. Unfortunately, over time, I think that, that the excitement of that adventure sours and many people do give up. So how would you explain though this, um, how, is this, okay, so let me, how do I say this? Is this why some people like make it big, like they hold on to this dream, this 
beautiful vision they have because they're not looking for something that's missing. They already feel something special that they're looking for a place to just like plug it in or to um, amplify it or to make it open up like some kind of alchemy or something like you have this gift and because I'm thinking of people like that are mega rock stars or incredible musicians or incredible performers and or brilliant scientists that kind of thing people are really just amazing like beyond beyond reproach Oh, I think that's two very different scenarios that you're you're showing you're you're bringing you're bringing forward. He says. Uh, he says, I know you're grouping me into that category. I know, and I'm I'm humbled. He says, I'm humbled. I thank you for that, but you see, I, I didn't know any different. I just did what I loved. I enjoyed music. I wanted to sing. I wanted to perform. I, I loved it. I, it's, it's sort of like a drug. It's a, something you discover and it's this incredible, like he's showing me this adrenaline rush and this boost of energy that you just can't go without. And um, he says, I don't know that it's, I knew I had a gift. I had a, a want, a want that I just had to experience over and over and over and over again and recreate this 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 rush this this incredible synergy you know you guys i'm feeling synergy between him and the audience and that just you feed off that energy and it just that's how it is that's how it is from my perspective looking over life for others it's not the same you cannot it, it's it is very difficult to draw parallels between your life and another life it, it's very difficult especially when this is freddie mercury's information not bridget's information especially when you compare yourself to someone completely different than you completely different circumstance different part of the world different family life different all sorts of different different time different opportunities to, different trade skills gifts whatever you call it it, it it you can't it doesn't it doesn't work to do that that only results in disappointment in in giving up on on what you you love i mean what you love to do what you enjoy the most if you if you're lucky and you're good at it then you have a match you've made a match okay you guys i gotta blow my nose a little bit it's really cold in here if you can hear in the background I have the, uh, the heater going, so I apologize if that's annoying to you, but eh, so it is. So there's not like this mission, this grand life purpose for each of us, and we're, we're to discover it, like it's out in the world, and we have to go find it. <laughs> he says, no, I, I'm not a great, he says, I'm not a great philosopher, Bridget. I, I can't really speak to the search for for a purpose. Uh, I, I much rather would focus on doing the things that bring you happy, happiness, the things that make you happy, being around the people that, that put you in good spirits and, and uh, who are encouraging and, and, and then in turn also encourage yourself to have experiences, to try different things, to experiment with different things so that you can dis, you know, discover, or he says, and that discover is not the right word, what is the, Learn more about yourself and find your way. That's really, that's really what the goal is. That's really what this purpose is, is to have a happy life. What, what does that look like for you? I can't say. I can't say that. We are different. We're different people. And that is by design. That is by design. So when you compare yourself to someone who is incredibly gifted or talented, like you said, like a, a famous scientist, or an incredible writer, for example, like a Nobel Prize winner, for example. How can you compete with that? You can't. So you set yourself up for, for this, this feeling of incredible disappointment, and then you feel like a big, a big nothing. And that's not, it's not a competition. There's not, we weren't set up to create a competitiveness within ourselves to then show others how much we are are important or what we can contribute 
like those aren't really his words. His words not contribute, but how how important we are to society. He says it's it's just all it's all it's all this like false sense of value. It's mis really misguided, very misguided. So, what kind of advice would you give us then for the people who are seeking to find their purpose? Then it already lives within you. It already exists. Life in itself has a purpose, it has meaning, it is important. So, so what you do with it, that is your choice. It's a series of choices. Life is a series of choices. What is your goal? That's what you need to ask yourselves. What is your goal? What is your intention for your life? And, and this is something that you don't just decide once. You, you come back around to and you ask yourself again and you have reflection and you consider different, different choices, different options. And life brings you different things and you, you work with them. You accept that or you change it or you move on or... This is how it is. This is how life is intended to be. It's, it's intended to be experienced. There isn't an answer, he says. There's, there's not an answer. If you're seeking an answer, you will never find one because there isn't one answer. There's many answers because there should be many, many, many questions that you're asking of yourself, of others, of life. This sparks curiosity and curiosity is connected to creativity, which is what in your spiritual terms you would say manifestation or or making your dreams real or or allowing them to become um how does he say it's not tangible allowing them to become manifest did you have a happy life would you say was your life happy freddie yes Yes, I would certainly say it was happy. I mean, where are there disappointments? Yes, well, sh of course, of course, everyone experiences disappointments. I look at those who are still living and doing the best they can, I shall say, and I wish them absolutely the best in doing that. And I, I feel fortunate. Yes, to have had many wonderful people in my life and including family and good friends and they know who they are. Mm. Mm. When you say disappointments, what type of disappointments? I mean, it'd be nice to know um, from a human perspective that you were human. <laughs> and then what kind of uh, disappointments? Well, I think, you know, Every time you guys, when I'm talking to him, every time he, he like leans forward a lot because he's like gesturing for like what a human would do as far as smoking. And it's a mannerism. Smoking is a habit or a habitual motion to lean forward to grab the cigarette is like a, a, a mannerism that makes, that helps me see within my mind's eye through the third eye channel that I am speaking to him in the context of he's using the lensing of his human life, not just the lensing of uh, an afterlife wise energy spirit, but from a human perspective. So he's working through the lens of human, his human personal experience, that's how I know. So every time I move like this, I'm, he's doing that. I feel like I need to say that to you all, even though I'm, my, in my mind, I'm aware that people are like, well, how can spirits smoke? I'm like, oh, people, please do not be so literal. It's a motion, a movement that gives me the clairvoyantly, the indication that affirms to me as the channeler, as the medium, that he is using the lens of his human life context of experience. There we go. So talk to us about that. Talk to us about disappointment like being a real person talk to us about that if you're comfortable doing that well there's and I think it's pretty obvious some of the things that I uh, failed to do in my life you know having children having a family although I would say I would argue that I do have children and, and a God, he looks like a godson. It looks like he's referring to two though, not just one, but he says godson. And then he says somebody else. So there's two children. I feel like they're both boys, by the way. And so I'm feeling that. So he says, and, and, and I had very many wonderful friends that were like family, that treated me like family, that took care of me like family. And he is referring to, he's, he is mentioning Mary. Again, it's weird because 
When I channel people who everybody knows all about their lives, and we've channeled Freddie Mercury many times before, I know very well that many of you have major opinions about his relationships and stuff, stuff like that, which you can have, and I'm sure you love it when other people have opinions about your relationships. Don't you love it when your mother-in-law has something to say about how you cook or how you parent? Don't you guys love that? Okay, let's just keep that context. <laughs> Freddie just goes, oh, 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 Bridget, <laughs> he's like, oh, 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 you're going to get some hate for that. <laughs> That's the wonderful thing. When you run the show, when you run the channel, when you're the one out here getting, getting the work done on the YouTubes, I'm starting to realize that, you know what, we're just going to say it like it is, my friend. How about that? And you and I, Freddie, we're going to have a good time while we share our conversations with others and encourage them. Give them the real about life, huh? <clears throat> disappointment. Doesn't that sting, everybody? Doesn't disappointment sting? For me, it does. I know. I know. I mean, some of you maybe haven't experienced disappointment, but I certainly have. And clearly, Mr. Mercury has as well. Hmm. So family, not having like children of your own. <clears throat> I don't think, and then he says, I don't think I would have been the best father. I'm, I'm, I'm quite selfish. I'm sure I, I appreciate I appreciated my alone time and yet I never wanted to be alone for too long so I might be considered high maintenance and I'm not sure if that would really be a great formula for fatherhood so so in retrospect I I see things have worked out for the best so next time around when you reincarnate, if you choose to do that, if you haven't already chosen to do that, Mr. Mercury, would you say you would like to experience having a family, maybe being a father or a mother or, and having children of your own? Yes. Yes. I think that'd be fun. Yes. I, I would agree with that. I, I don't feel, um, I want to be clear with you, Bridget, I don't feel any deep heartache for not having children. I, I don't feel that. I, I was quite fulfilled with the relationships I've had with my family and my friends and and I'm 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 glad for that. I'm glad for that. Mm -hmm. There's not a deep, deep intensity about the disappointment. There's just a oh yeah, I didn't I wasn't able to get to that in this life, so okay. Right. All right. Okay, so let's see. I asked you what about life purpose. I have a notebook in front of me that I made a list of some questions we could chat about. All right. Oh, um, here's kind of a different... Oh, oh, okay, okay. Let's, let's keep this to um, stuff specifically since you're in the, the lens of um, human life. And people love that. So let's, let's stay in here instead of getting too big about, I mean, we already talked about life purpose, but let's talk about this. Um, so I'm recording this particular video on February 18th. That's the date, 2021. So... In 1991, February 18th, you would have had, I think, your last public appearance on stage for like an award show. And I know this because um, I just, we just did a group, as I mentioned, and there was significance to the date for the group. And I didn't know that before I scheduled it, but after I scheduled it, of course, I find out, oh, that's significant. The last date, February 18th, was the last date of some kind of public uh, appearance thing for you. And so I was thinking about that and I listened to some of your music today to kind of get in the spirit <laughs> of doing that group session and one video, because I, I watch um, YouTube, I access my music on YouTube, and one video that I will go back to when I really want to feel you, really feel you, 
like as if we were real people being friends, not just spirit to spirit being friends, is these are the days of our lives or these are the day these are the days of life or something like that. And it was the last video that you recorded. And I've watched this video a few times over the last couple of years and it always gets me. It always touches me. I think it's because of your physical appearance in that video really hits home to me because I remember my dad as he got sicker and sicker he got thinner and thinner and thinner and he just looked so old not that you looked old i'm not saying that at all you looked quite good mm -hmm. and considering your health at that time oh my goodness you looked great considering your health at the time but you can see you know that you were very thin and, and i know that was uh something you're self-conscious about or aware of and didn't want people to worry about you or see that in in the performance in the video um and then knowing watching that video listening to the song the words that were written by um somebody else i think roger wrote them and about his family right i think it was, it's about a family i think it was rogers i'm pretty sure and but you singing it was like it was sort of like a, a a farewell or a goodbye because at the end you say i still love you and you say i still love you and then you walk away from the camera and that just feels really profound and so my question to you Freddie is about that song in that video when you were singing it and you were making the video did you have a sense at all that this was your last opportunity to to connect with your fans that this would be the last video the last song Oh, I think he says, um, he's very reflective, you guys. Kind of looks down and he says, I think that could have been true for any of the songs, really. We recorded so much. And the guys were, they were great. They were, they were so great during that time. They were such good sports, you know, and I know they had other things, you know, they had other things to do, to be doing, and other, other parts of life, you know, to be living. And they were always there for me so that I could so that I could do my work, do my, it's not work, he's saying so that I could fulfill my purpose. Do you like that, you guys? You like that nice wrap around, fulfill my purpose? It worked out quite well, didn't it? It was a rather good, a rather good uh, piece to end, end on, isn't it? Uh, to answer your question directly, no. Not exactly, but I knew I wasn't well and it was getting much more difficult to make it through. I could record, I, I did record. Um, my vocals weren't, weren't um, the best. They, they weren't the greatest, but I did record after that. I just didn't, um, wasn't able to quite finish anything else that would be uh, worthy of, uh, viewing or listening to for that matter. <laughs> hmm. Are you satisfied with that being the last song, the last video completed? I don't, I don't really consider it that way. In that way, I can see now looking at it and the message of the song, yes, how it would be very appropriate. I don't really consider it that way. There's so much music. There's so much that we created and that we shared and, and Queen still goes on. They're a band that keeps singing, <laughs> keeps performing. They're, they go on. Queen is not dead. 
I am dead. I may be dead, but they are not dead. <laughs> and so the work carries on. Yeah, that makes him happy, you guys. He's like, yeah, it carries on. Yeah. Like, it's not done. It's not over. I might be over, but it's not over. <laughs> That's cool, you guys. That's cool that he says it. Freddie, I can feel that pure joy when you say that from you. So um, I have asked you about, like, Adam Lambert and the direction of the band now and the different singers that have been, um, the people that have been, you know, part of it and guest singers and that kind of a thing. I've asked you about that before. We've talked about that. So, so you don't feel like you've been replaced or anything like that? And do you have a preference? Oh, over, he's like over um, people or who I would choose. I can't be replaced. I can't be replaced. The, the guys would, he's like, the guys would tell you that too. It's not, it's not about replacing. It's about the next, the next, um, he's like the next evolution of Queen. That's all it is. It's just, it's the next evolution. That's it, you guys. So he's not offended. He doesn't seem to have a major opinion or a strong feeling either way. Um, in previous videos, he has mentioned Adam Lambert specifically and said he was incredibly talented. But right now he's just, it's the next evolution. It's the next, he's like, it's not my business. It's like they, you know, Queen isn't done. <laughs> it's still going, you know. They didn't need me. It wasn't just me. It was called Queen, not Freddie Mercury and the band. It's, it's, it's. It's, it's still going, and I, in that way, it, you know, it has a life of its own. Yeah. You guys, he feels almost nostalgic a little bit, a little bit sentimental, just a tiny bit, but no, no sense of ownership, like, it's mine kind of a thing, like, give me credit, like, it's nothing like that. He has no, no energy like that whatsoever. That um, video, though, and seeing your face, it really touches me, that's... It's almost like you've, I can feel in that video when I watch it that you've come to terms at that point with, with your death, that it was, you know, it was coming. I mean, you could probably feel your body letting itself go. Is that true? Is that an accurate psychic feel about that particular video? Well, it was clearly unhealthy. It was clearly unhealthy. It was clearly a struggle for me to be standing upright and at those times and so it it just one could easily believe that 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 be true that i would know that my body was deteriorating of course i knew my body was deteriorating it wasn't quite cooperative with me at times some days were difficult some times of the day were more difficult than others but i really tried not to think about that and and I didn't and despite what you might believe I wasn't trying to stay busy so I wouldn't think about death it wasn't it wasn't like something that I was afraid of but I wasn't in a big rush to get to it either I wasn't concerned I wasn't really um I wasn't ever in a state of being engulfed in my own suffering I didn't really feel this weighed down by suffering and oh poor me or how how awful is this and and I just carried on, carried on about living, carried on about life. He says, carried on about life. And really tried to make the most of the times that I had left, those moment to moment, without thinking too far in advance, because I didn't really have a, a future to look ahead to, and, and that, that is common knowledge. That was common knowledge. I was not, but despite what some may believe or feel, I was not in denial about my death. I want to speak about this. I was not in denial about my death. I did not wait to share my health status. And like he's saying AIDS, the fact that I had AIDS, I did not wait to share that because I was ashamed or because I, I wanted to hide anything. It was quite obvious that I was ill, but I didn't feel that parading around as the poster boy for um, this new disease would be something that would benefit myself or anyone else who had it. And I didn't want to make it a big circus. And it wasn't just about my life. I didn't want, it wasn't about, it wasn't personal as far as I didn't, it wasn't about me and my legacy. 
I, I thought of the band and I, I didn't want them to have to deal with the, you know, a, being haunted by this, this, every time they did anything, there, were all, there would be all these questions about AIDS and Freddie and all this. And you, and you can't control that. I mean, we know we can't control the media in that regard or, or what people are going to talk. People will talk and, and they will assume whatever they want to anyway. I didn't feel like I owed it to anyone to, to tell the world up to date, up to the minute information about when I was going to the bathroom and when I wasn't and when I sneezed and when I did not and when. There's other things I could use here as you know examples, but I didn't really think it was other people's business. And in the deciding to share it wasn't because I finally accepted my death. That's not why I shared it. It was because we had written, we had talked about it previous. And the release of it was because, yes, it, the timing was important. I wanted it to go out before my death, but not too long before, as that would be the only focus. I didn't want people to be waiting around for me to die. I mean, that's quite morbid, I know, to say, but it's, it's quite true. And many of the tabloids in the press at that time, remember, that was the early 90s, and that was this whole beginning of the paparazzi thing, and um, this whole a cesspool of reporting and, and such. And, and I didn't want to uh, encourage that. <clears throat> so, but I was not ashamed. I, I want to be very clear, straight with you. I was not ashamed. I have never been ashamed of who I am. And nor will I ever sit in judgment in that regard. And I'm kind of feeling this, and neither should you, but you stop there. You don't say that. Because I wouldn't have said that. He says, Bridget, I wouldn't have told people that in my lifetime. I wouldn't have, you know, in a joking way, funny, I may have said what, how I feel, but I would never want to intentionally hurt somebody else's feelings. If I did that, I can can assure you that I would apologize and I would feel quite badly about it and perhaps not even realize that I was hurtful in the first place. And my friends can attest to that. Okay. I'm looking to see. I don't think I have anything else. Yeah, that was it. That was it for this video. Thank you, Fred. Appreciate your time today. And thanks for being here. Thank you, Above Life Channel viewers, for watching this interesting and um, very candid <laughs> interview. From my perspective, as Bridget, the psychic medium that hosts Above Life Channel here on YouTube, and with our guest, Freddie Mercury, in the afterlife as we're recording this on February 18th, 2021. When you watch this video, it'll probably be at a different time. Um, as I record ahead a week or two, but uh, you can go ahead and look up the significance of that date and kind of research that if you choose to. And since we were talking about, I mentioned um, songs and videos and things like that. If you have a favorite Queen song, go ahead and put it, just type the title in the comments below. Type the title of your favorite Queen song in the comments below. If you put any links, by the way, it'll just be caught as spam by YouTube. So links don't show up. They just go into a, a trash folder, just so you know. So it doesn't work to put links, but just, just type the title of it. Especially other Freddie Mercury fans and Queen fans will know exactly what music you're talking about. So go ahead and do that. I'm curious about it, about what you, uh, songs that you love by Freddie Mercury and the band Queen, that'd be great. All right, thank you, Freddie, and thanks for being here. Thank you for being here. As always, the purpose of our channeling videos here on Above Life Channel is to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope, to encourage you to live your life, regardless of other people's opinions, their judgments, what they say, how they comment, whatever. Regardless of that, okay? It's your life, right? And it, didn't you hear what Freddie said about the purpose of our lives, right? It's is for our happiness. Like that's the reason why we're we're here and that's what we're trying to accomplish or discover or find and that happens through our experiences, which means it's your life. It's yours. So live it. Just 
live it. Thanks for being here.